This time on Shade Tree, we restore our 63 bug, piece by piece. Alright, so what we're going to try and do is uh, put a little insulation in the car. There's no insulation at all in the thing, so it's going to rattle like a tin can, just like John's Oval. And even though it looks nice, which is an awesome thanks to my brother for painting it, because I certainly don't have the time to do it, I have a little bit of ability, but nothing like he did, and he did an amazing job. But I um, started looking at Dynamat and all that, and found out quickly that it would cost more than I put in the paint to do the uh, insulation so I seen some people on YouTube do the uh, self-adhesive foil foam insulation from Home Depot and I had a bug before I used that stuff that like um, Jags and all them sell the the uh, denim material with the uh, silver mylar backing on it and that worked well but um, kind of didn't want to order something off the internet because I'm kind of ADD and I kind of want to work on it little bits here and there at, like at night like it is right now. So I went down to Home Depot and bought this. It's carpet padding. Um, it doesn't have that mylar face, of course, so we'll, we'll see how well it works. I'm looking more for sound insulation on that and hopefully a little heat insulation on the roof for this. Plus this self adheres to it. So that's kind of a bonus. Um, who knows if it really will work? I mean, they say it does, but I mean, probably not as good as the real stuff. But um, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to start with the roof. Um, we'll have to get in there and uh, get all the junk out of it, of course. I've filled it up with stuff. But we'll do the roof. The roof's already, the headliner's gone. Just got to move the bows and we'll see how well it sticks. What I've done is I've gone in here. And I cleaned the roof. As you can see, you know, it's still got like the uh, old adhesive up there that Volkswagen used for that horsehair stuff. And um, I just, you could use like mineral spirits to do it, I guess, and all that stuff. And of course, I had none of that um, any good cleaner, so I just used good old 409 and cleaned up there, you know, getting any grease off and all that. So hopefully, this stuff will stick down. So next, I'm going to. Because I only got two hands and I got nothing else to hold the camera. I'm going to unroll, gravel some of this and uh, measure it out to the roof line there. Cut a chunk off and stick it up there. I figured I'd show you some of the progress. Um, I made the strips about three feet long. That doesn't bring it all the way to the back. There's probably a good foot and a half there that's not even covered. But um, mainly, you know, I wanted kind of over my head where where the sun's beaming down and this is kind of like the longer hollow hollower part of the roof so you know it usually has that really tinny tin sound when it hits in the center I've noticed before um, but the stuff actually um, stickier than I thought I didn't think it would actually stick really well it does and, you know and I figured I'd show you putting a piece on um, here's a chunk of it it has the stickiness on the back. You just peel it off. What I was surprised was I thought it would have um, like a plastic or you know paper backing to it. It doesn't. You just basically peel it off and stick it on. So hopefully I can set the camera up here. And I'm just finding spots because I'm not going to have enough to do the whole car. So like right there is pretty hollow sounding right down in here and the wheel well is pretty solid with that bend to it so in an area like that I want to try and get to be a little nicer to live with so I'll just pick it up take some scissors and cut it cuts really easy I was actually surprised about that I thought it would be a with the foam I thought it would really kind of be a pain to cut so get it up over there and then the way I'm smoothing it out, 
So I'm just using a paint roller, that's what I got. I don't have the little wooden tool, you know. And this seems to be working well. You could probably actually just do it by hand and it would work just as well. But, you know, I had the little paint roller, I figured out to use it. So I'll cut another little triangular piece for this spot there and that will do a good chunk of that. Um, I've always noticed in the Volkswagens, it's the back luggage tray area when you're driving around, especially here in Florida, you know, you always get heat back here because of the exhaust and all that stuff. Um, another area I've noticed, especially in John's Oval, is that for some reason um, the ovals are much more hollow. There's no um, insulation in here um, like there is in the late models. You know, the late models have the foam and all that. And some ovals I've seen, um, it almost looks like rags. It's like little pillows stuffed up in there and stuff to get the noise down. John's has gotten none of that. And um, what we notice is the hot air will actually come through this channel, and he has no door panels. And it will come out the door panel and actually heat up the seat. So, um, you know, if you got a car you're going to try and do a rat rod thing and you're going to run without the door panels, something to keep in consideration, especially if you live in the hotter weather area. All right, we're back. If you heard in the last pit there, the little guy was uh, starting to cry, so I got him to sleep. Turn that little picture off. It drains the battery. All right, so one roll is 15 square foot. And the question I ask myself is how far is that? Because, you know, I don't want to do a whole bunch of math, and you could do the math and figure out how much is that. But, you know, basically 15 feet will cover about, I'd say, 90% of the roof. Like I say, there's the back window bow of it right there. And this is probably a foot and a half right there, you know. if you So it's like two of my hands up there. And... I was also able to do the rear package shelf, shelf there and a little bit on each side. This is basically a mirror image of each side and a little chunk right there in the door, rear quarter window area. I'm not too afraid of the door. Um, really don't care about road noise. I'm really more concerned about engine noise. Um, but the doors are got a lot of bondo in them from uh, the previous owner um, doing patch repairs on the door so I'm not really worried about them making noise. I get a lot of Bondo in that. So the next thing we'll move on to is I'm actually going to put some of that carpet padding down there in here on the back luggage area and um, start cutting pieces out for that. We'll see how far that goes. I think that's 25 square feet or something like that. Alright, so now I've moved on to the uh, under carpet padding stuff here. Um, it's easy, simple, you know, you just cut it out to shape. You know, the stuff cuts with scissors, regular scissors, just like all like the other stuff. Um, I'm just laying it up there and then cutting it out to shape as I go. And um, I guess, you know, in all reality I could use the carpet kit that I have and use those as templates for some of this area back here but you know I'm just doing it this way um, using contact cement to glue it down so of course I have the garage door open I have the fan going and uh, the, actually the one thing that's really kind of interesting is uh, you know they're saying like even in the next room if you have a gas appliance you could cause an explosion so you know just heed the warnings you know, it may be just a bunch of lawyer talk, but, you know, that may be something to wor worry about. So, glue both sides, of course, and let it tack up, and then stick it on. That's how contact cement works, if you're not familiar with that. Most people are. Um, Could have used the spray type. Um, I've used the spray type before. Um, the 3M brand Super 77 is, like, the best that I've ever used. The other stuff kind of, you know, you know, the Permatex, not so great. Um, same thing with the Elmer's glue. It would work if you let it tack up for a real long time. But, um, you know, regular contact cement or the Super 77 is what I'd go with. So I'm going to do the fender well areas here. Um, probably going to do along in the bottom of the uh, windows here because they're supposed to be padding under there. Same thing with the B pillar. Um, not sure if I'm going to do the roof or not. Um, I was originally going to do the roof, but may not because it's one person and that's kind of hard to do right now. I may do that later if I have some leftover. Um, 
definitely going to do the floor pans um because they're really hollow sounding they're replacement floor pans and i'll probably do up under in the front here by the front firewall and fender wells so i'll get moving on that and uh show you a little bit of progress later all right so here we are it's probably like an hour and a half two hours later um did the whole back parcel shelf area the wheel wells with the uh carpet padding there um also i did went ahead and i did the floorboards and not the front firewall but i did do these sides um you know gravel gets thrown up in there when you hit gravel on the road and stuff i didn't want to do the front firewall because that's where the uh passenger side footrest hooks into and the uh really doesn't serve a whole lot of purpose up there you know the gas tanks up there so that sound should deaden some of the sound um as far as it working i think it will work pretty good because um these are replacement floor pans so they're pretty thin and, and not very uh sturdy like the originals or like the whisper west and right there you can hear the uh, floor kind of does a little oil canning there when I put weight on it and that was quite a bit louder beforehand um, I still have quite a bit I may do the headliner area just to kind of deaden the sound when the hailstorms come but I'll probably do that another day um, but other than that that's pretty much it um, the roll of carpet padding was about $25 I think it was $25.99 the silver um, it's like a foam it's not um, it's not really like a the tar stuff you know like Dynamat kind of is this is like a foam with a facing on it aluminum facing that was like 16 or 18 bucks they did sell the uh, I've seen other people using it's like a like a roof flashing it has the aluminum on it and then it has tar um like asphalt based stuff in it um looks kind of more like dynamat i thought about doing that but it's um also it's a little it's only six inches wide instead of one foot wide and it's the same length so it's like 25 feet long but it's six six inches wide so it, yeah, I guess, you, I guess you get a little less. Um, plus, the car will smell like asphalt. So, kind of didn't like that idea. Even though this thing's probably going to be a year before I get it to all the way together. But, um, probably next time we'll do something different. Um, I know the lug nuts on here are too long. They actually stick in and they were hitting the brakes when we went to pick up the car from my brother's house so I had to pull all the brakes off in his front yard so that I could get the car to roll because it took out the little springs and the uh, pins that hold the uh, shoes in place the interesting thing is we had these on John's car and he had drum brakes in and had no problem so It'd be interesting when we pull it off to see how far the lug nut sticks through there. I'm probably going to switch it out the studs. But other than that, it's starting to come along.